the Father. Amen. Let us pray. <coughs> o God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who lives and reigns with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how for forty years now the Lord your God has directed all your journeying in the desert so as to test you by affliction and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger and then fed you with manna, a food unknown to you and your fathers, in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its seraph serpents and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground, who brought forth water for you from the flinty rock and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your fathers. The word of the Lord. Thanks. and see the goodness of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times, God's praise ever in my mouth. Glory in the the Lord who answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look to God that you might be radiant with joy and your faces free from all shame. The Lord hears the suffering reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because the loaf of bread is one, we, though many, are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Follows me, will have the light. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jewish crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. If you guys look at uh, Wi-Fi, the little Wi-Fi icons, you'll notice that there's two arrows, right? One that's going up and one that's going down, okay? So that's to show, like, on our network, we can send some data up, and then some data comes down, right? That's kind of how, you know, internet works. Today, Jesus says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. And today, we celebrate the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of Christ, which is the fact that as we offer up to God our prayers, our needs, our mistakes, our failures, he offers down to us something immeasurably more precious than what we've offered up to him, which is the living bread, the presence of Jesus Christ. In the Mass, there's two moments where we offer things to God. Okay. So, um, right at the beginning of the of the liturgy of the Eucharist is the offertory. And the priest takes the, the host and he kind of holds it kind of low in front of himself. Right? And he says, Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, who have given us this bread, um, and so forth. And then later on, at the end of the Eucharistic prayer, the priest holds up the host and the deacon usually holds up the chalice and we offer it once more to God. But at this point, he holds it much higher. That's because between the offertory and that final raising up, that final doxology, something happens. And what happens is the Lord Jesus, through the ministry of the priest, takes the bread and wine and says, this is my body, this is my blood. He takes the bread that we have offered to him, he takes what we have lifted up before him, and he gives us something immeasurably more. He gives us his body and blood. He claims that collection of, uh, of broken wheat and water and the crushed grapes and wine, and wine. And he claims that as his own body and blood. And it's not just a symbol. The church has always believed that this is the real presence, the true substantial presence of Jesus Christ. But he takes that offering that we make and transforms it into the living bread. The remarkable thing is that Christ doesn't just do that with the bread and wine that we offer, but he also does that with our individual lives. We offer to God our, you know, the, the crushed wheat of our lives, the mistakes, the dreams, the hopes, all the things that we have kind of connected, all our memories, we offer those up to God. We offer him our joys. We offer him our hopes for the future, our dreams, our loves. And he takes all of those and says, this is my body. He takes us as the church and he says, these are the people that I want to work through and live through in the world. I want these people to remain in me and I in him. I want these people with their collection of you know, broken grains of wheat and so forth. I want these people 
to have life because of me, just as I have life from the Father. It's an amazing reality that we take what we have, we offer it to God, and he takes that and pours into it his own life. It's like when we go to confession. What do we do? We bring to God what? Our sins. And he gives us what? His divine life, his grace, his freedom, his peace. It's like when we receive the anointing of the sick. We're there, and what do we bring? Nothing. We're just lying there in bed, kind of dependent on God. But he gives us a participation in the cross of Christ, the salvific suffering and death that brings life to the rest of the world. It's like, you know, a guy who a month ago was kind of just a dude, and now he's a priest. Right? It's an amazing, what do I bring? <laughs> and yet God gives me this opportunity to, to offer the sacrifice at the Mass. It's amazing. We bring to God so little, but we bring to him all of ourselves. And he takes that and transforms it into his body and blood here at the altar and then as we go out into the world. It's a great tradition on Corpus Christi Sunday um, to have a procession to take the, the consecrated host, take the body of Christ, and process out, you know, I don't know, throughout the town and so forth. Today, we can't do that, right? But we are going to process out of the church, each of us, individually, having received within ourselves the body of Christ. And so each of us, each of our families, is going to be kind of an individual procession going out and bringing the presence of Christ into the world. And we can think about that today, and I guess the rest of the week. Wherever we are, we can think, I am remaining in Jesus, and he remains in me. Why? Because I have come to this altar, come to this table, and received the Holy Communion, the bread of life, the flesh of Christ for the life of the world here at this Mass. So let's give thanks to the Father that we have offered him all of ourselves, all that we have, and even though it's not perfect, even though we have mistakes and, and, and failures and inadequacies, that he takes that and works through that to live the life of Christ, the body of Christ, here at this altar and then in the world. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. Brothers and sisters, we, though many, are one body in Christ, and so together we offer to our loving God our prayers for the world around us. Our response is, bread of life, hear our prayer. For our church throughout the world, that nourished by the Eucharist, we will become witnesses to God's love for all. We pray, bread of life, hear our prayer. For the hungry in every nation, including our own, 
for families and children without enough to eat, for the elderly who are alone and starving, we pray. For our, for our faith community, that the nourishment we receive from the Eucharist may energize us to reach out and assist those who are in need of nourishment, clothing, or shelter, that we would live the life of Jesus Christ in the world, we pray. For our children who are receiving the Eucharist for the first time, today, last week, and the coming two weeks in First Holy Communion, may they return to the table of the Lord each week in order to receive his love and strength, in order to live as God's disciples, we pray. For an end of violence and racism, and for those who keep us safe, we pray. Bread of life, hear our prayer. For healthcare workers who are selflessly treating coronavirus patients during this epidemic, may God grant them fortitude and deliver them safely at the end of each day, we pray. We pray for all those who have died, especially for Wilma Smedberg, Richard Weisbach, and Francis Buchel, who died this past week, and for those remembered at this Mass. For Lynn Weinschott, for B.W. and A.K., for Ellie Gratton, Patricia Smet, Frank, Don, and Dustin Lamb. Pray also for the soul of Father Eugene Winkler, a priest of the Archdiocese who died this past week. We pray. Bread of life, hear our prayer. Now we add our own personal petitions in the silence of our hearts. We pray. Bread of life, hear our prayer. Generous God, you provided our ancestors with manna in the desert and water from the rock. Instill in us generous hearts, transformed by the body and blood of Christ, so that we can share our bounty with those in need. Grant this and all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Let us be bread blessed by the Lord, broken and shared, life for the world. Let us be wine, love freely poured. Let us be Sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery, 
in the offerings we here present through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through who Christ our Lord, for at the Last Supper with his apostles, Establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect grace. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy, so that the human race, founded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith, and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, so that, bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the host of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son of Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jerome, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, 
giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, now weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. and drinks my blood remains in me and I in them says the offer as 
a sign of your love. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. We're going to enjoy celebrating this Sunday by the most holy body and blood of Christ with you all. You guys have a good Sunday, a good week, and we'll see you next Sunday. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended.